So good morning. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce the Honorable Mayor Randall Woodfin. To the right is Deputy Chief Henri Pruitt that commands our Patrol Bureau, and to his right is Deputy Chief Jeff Brown that commands our Investigative Bureau. We also have Tyra Cunningham, who is Assistant Special Agent in Charge of ATF here in Birmingham, and we have Special Agent in Charge for FBI Carlton Peoples with us. So last night about 11 p.m., Birmingham Police and Birmingham Fire Rescue were called to the 2000 block of Magnolia Avenue on multiple individuals who were shot. Uh, approximately 21 people were shot, four of those are deceased. Um, they were taken to various hospitals and the ATF and FBI were on scene with us assisting in that investigation. We believe this was a targeted shooting. It was not something that occurred at that location, but there was an individual there who was, who was targeted. Uh, we feel comfortable in saying that at this point in time. Uh, there is a lot of things still developing. We believe that you know, approximately over 100 shell casings were uh, collected, along with numerous other pieces of evidence. Um, we're currently reviewing video surveillance and other things. Uh, we have set up a QR code that uh, our public information office will get out to everyone so that uh, citizens can give information to uh, our law enforcement uh, uh, detectives and things so they can further this investigation. Uh, I'd just like to thank Birmingham Fire and Rescue, the Birmingham police officers uh, that were there last night, as well as UAB Hospital, St. Vincent's Hospital, Princeton Hospital, and Brookwood Hospital. Anytime, even though we're a large city, anytime when something of this magnitude occurs, uh, it's very taxing on all of our city services and all these uh, different medical facilities. So just really like to thank them. Also just to the victims and to the victims' family, just our, our heartfelt condolences go out to them. Uh, that's 21 peoples whose lives were forever changed. That's 21 families that were, uh, some were destroyed and some were just altered and just our hearts go out to them uh, as we work through this. But this is, a, this is going to take some time for us, but we have the full support of our federal partners. I've spoken with District Attorney Danny Carr. Um, you know, everybody's on board assisting us. It's just going to take some time to work through this. And if the, the public has any information, we ask them to please, please either call Crime Stoppers at 205-254-7777, call Birmingham Police Homicide Unit, 205-254-1764. Please, you know, or utilize the QR code that we'll release shortly, um, because it's going to take everyone to work together to get these individuals off the streets who inflicted this carnage on our city last night. And no one in this city wants these people on our streets. So I now turn it over to the Honorable Mayor Randall Woodfin for a comment. As Chief has stated um, last night, what happened in our community was extremely unfortunate. In the 2200 block of Magnolia Avenue, I think there are many things we can do. The first thing and the priority is to get these shooters, find these shooters and get them off our streets. Um, that will require the assistance of community members, not just from last night, but anyone who would have any information related to uh, the whereabouts of these shooters. Um, I think it's criti critically important um, for us to be in the position to best solve this case for community members to step forward. I want to stress that you can remain anonymous and call Crime Stoppers at 205-254-7777. Again, that phone number is 205-254-7777. If you have any information, please reach out to Crime Stoppers. I also want to acknowledge um, the, the toll of this, the heavy, heaviness of this. Um, for many, many people involved, one for these victims. Um, the victims who live, um, who have to wake up and face a new unfortunate normal related to the emotional as well as physical trauma um, that they will have to live with. Two to those who actually lost their lives, uh, to their families. There are no words um, for that loss, right? Trying to stand here and find words to describe um, those families and what they're feeling right now. The anger, the hurt, the pain, the loss. I will say this, we, all of us, as a community, owe it to them to do everything we can to take these shooters, killers off our streets. I also want to echo sentiments of what Chief Thurman said, and that is a huge thank you, first to our first responders. 
um, our officers in our fire department, EMA, et cetera, um, what they saw last night, what they wake up facing. Um, that's an emotional toll on them as well. Uh, but I want to give a huge shout out to UAB Hospital, St. Vincent's Hospital, Brookwood Hospital, and Princeton Hospital for doing what they do best, and that is saving lives. Um, all of those hospitals stepped up last night for those surviving victims. But I want to make something clear. I am a, an elected official. My position is nonpartisan. And so in this moment, pretty much like all moments, I really don't care. I don't give a damn about partisan. I don't care about Democrat, Democratic politics, Republican politics. What I care about and what is my concern, what is my top priority, along with the Birmingham Police Department, is public safety. But you got to give us the tools to solve these issues. This is not the first occasion, unfortunately, in 2024 where we've seen the style of weapons, the number of bullets on the scene, possibly convergent use, et cetera, um, automatic weapons being used in our streets. This is a solvable problem, and I want to explain that. You know, I tell people when America gets a cold, um, it's possible that Birmingham gets the flu. We've seen this um, in the 60s in, during segregation at the height of it. Unfortunately, we were the poster child. We found ourselves in 2024 where gun violence is at an epidemic level and an epidemic crisis in our country. And unfortunately, the city of Birmingham finds itself, unfortunately, at the tip of that sphere. Is it solvable? The answer is yes. Does it require everyone to come together? The answer is also yes. At the height of gun violence in our country, which was the 90s, there was a bill that was passed. Now, some will say I'm getting too political, but I am a politician, so I need to speak the truth and publicly share my thoughts and what I'm feeling so people can understand what's at stake here. There was an assault weapons ban passed. Our country, and not just our country, but the city of Birmingham in that 10 year window saw the lowest, lowest form of gun violence. Since that assault, assault weapons ban has been lifted, a lot of things have changed. Not just the increase of homicides at a scale in the city of Birmingham, but the style of weapons used in our city. Conversions used, switches, et cetera. The number of shell casings on a given scene. That requires laws to be changed to give the necessary tools for police to enforce. That is my desire. That is our desire. Our desire, our priority, is to take killers and shooters off the streets. We don't have any interest in this whole debate about Second Amendment rights. We don't have any interest in people who want to protect their homes, militia, whatever else you want to say. There's a certain element in this city, there's a certain element in this community who are too comfortable riding around with semi-automatic weapons, automatic weapons, conversion switches, and everything else, whose only intent, hell-bent intent, is to harm people, shoot people, kill people. They don't care if it's innocent people around. They don't care if it's a business, a home, a senior, a child. That is their interest. We need the necessary tools. We don't have home rule. And so I want to work with the state. I want to work with the state to solve this problem. I'm not here to point fingers. But at an epidemic level that it is right now, can we make an exception for the city of Birmingham and allow the necessary resources, allow the necessary tools, allow the necessary laws to address this? Because this is not the first quadruple homicide we've had in 2024. But the same set of circumstances exist with the style of weapon, the number of bullets, the conversions, etc. This is solvable. We owe it to the victims. We owe it to the victims' families. We owe it to the victims who are no longer with us. We owe it to the victims who have to live with this trauma. We owe it to our innocent children, our innocent seniors. We owe it to every citizen in Birmingham. We owe it to small business owners and community members. We owe it to everyone. 
you know, Glock switches conversions are federally outlawed. And while they're outlawed with my left hand, you also have Congress not giving ATF the actual organization designed to enforce and take them off the street. You're cutting their resources at the federal level. You have to give people the tools they need to address and solve this issue. You see, we are prepared to be overly aggressive, dogmatic, if you will, and go after every shooter in the city. But as it stands, they can ride around with no permit. They can ride around with any type of gun. Again, if you want to protect your home, cool. But what are you going to do for us, the people who you say are responsible for public safety? You take this hand and you put it behind our back. You take this hand and you put it behind our back. I got it, I got it. No worries, I got it, brother. You take this hand and you put it behind our back. Then you put a blindfold over our eyes and tell us where well, you're responsible for solving this issue. So yeah, there are a lot of emotions that I have, but they pale in comparison to the family members who are waking up to their loved one not being beside them this morning. Pale, my emotions pale in comparison to the victims who are still at these hospitals I named, who have to figure out what's next in life, who have to live with this trauma. Do not tell me this is not solvable. And at the same time, do not tell me this is only on the police to solve. Elected officials, locally, statewide, and nationally have a duty to solve this American crisis, this American epidemic of gun violence. We should not allow people to just ride around with any style type of weapon that doesn't even belong on domestic streets. It should not be allowable, period. I don't care what your politics are. So, I said a lot, probably said too much. If you're offended by it, I don't care. We have a job to do. We want to get these shooters and killers off the street, and if you have information, it is incumbent upon you to call 205-254-7777 and give that information to us. You can remain anonymous. We'll continue to provide every resource available to these victims and their families. And our office will continue to lend every resource we can. We want to thank our federal partners, ATF and FBI, for being here with us standing in the gaps, assisting with this investigation, and always being with us. Thank you. Any questions? Um, Carol. You, you said at the beginning of the press conference you believe this was targeted yes. at an individual. Can you tell us how you've come to find that out already and why the individual was tar targeted and if the individual targeted is among the deceased? We believe the individual that was targeted is among the deceased. Um, we believe that there was a hit, if you will, on that particular person as far as, you know, um, someone was willing to pay money to have that person killed. Um, we just have that information from some of the information we've learned in the last few hours of that investigation. I mean, that could change, but that's where we're at right now. Um, like I said, there wasn't anything that occurred at any of the businesses nearby. There wasn't any, an altercation that occurred there on the sidewalk. So... Uh, with the information we have, that's we believe where we're at right now, as of today. We have the unsolved mass shooting from July yes. um, at the adult birthday party. Do you have more information at this point in the investigation on this case than you did at that? Because there have been no arrests there, but you seem to be moving pretty quickly on this one. No, I'd, I'd say we probably have more on the other one just because time has passed. We've had a lot more time to garner more information and, and you know, get things in place. Some of the things that, that we do just require time. You know, testing of evidence and other things just requires time. And so, uh, but, you know, the, as the mayor said, and really, and, and y'all, the public has seen it this year, when the public comes forward and shares information with law enforcement, and I, and I hats off to Birmingham Police Department, the men and women work day and night tirelessly to get those cases solved and get those individuals off the street. We've, we've proven that multiple times in 2024. As quickly as we get information, we act extremely swiftly. We pull whatever resources we need from our partners, 
and we get those individuals off of the streets of, of Birmingham. So uh, we'll do that and continue to do that. That'll never stop. That's why we're here. Um, but there again, public sharing that information is a lot of times is what makes those cases move much faster. We like to move very swiftly in this case and in all of our cases. But if we don't have that information, it makes it just a little bit harder for us. Not that we can't get there, but it just takes more time and makes it harder. Whereas if we can extract these individuals from our society today, we can make the city of Birmingham much safer. So is there any connection known between those two shootings? No. And, and then, that's one thing we look at, and not just those shootings, but any other shootings or any other situations. Is there a commonality between what occurred last night and any other incidents? And so we don't have anything right now saying that. What exact type of weapon was used? Uh, you know, we believe it was something that was fully automatic. I'll just leave it at that. Um, there's multiple shell casings. That's something that's going to take some time for our forensics team and, and ATF to assist us in processing. How many shooters? There were multiple. Were they in a car or did they... They were in a vehicle, a uh, guy out of the vehicle, shooting occurred, they fled in the vehicle. Did anybody return fire? That, that's one thing that we're working through right now to determine. You know, we're only, what, 10 hours from the time of the shooting, so you know, there's just limited information that we have right now that we can give out. And so as time goes on and we have more information that we can release, we will. Now, I know the mayor spoke about this a little bit, um, you know, changes in laws and that sort of thing. But if you have people that are stealing guns and, you know, it's easy to get a Glock switch or something like that on a 3D printer, doing things illegally, ordering them off the Internet, what can really be done to, you know, stop this type of crime from occurring? I think it goes back to the press conference that we had at the Birmingham Police Firing Range several months ago. We had all our partners there. We had a demonstration. A uh, U.S. attorney mentioned her, uh, the flip the switch, you know, contacting Crime Stoppers and giving that information. There have been arrests made off of that information, I will tell you that. And so when the public has that information, if they will share it with law enforcement, we will act to arrest those individuals. Um, if we know of someone who's you know, fabricating those devices, we would love to have that information so we can uh, deal with those individuals as well. But there again, the public is the eyes and ears of the city and the police department. They know far more than we will ever know. They've got to share that information with us so we can act on it and remove those people from the streets of Birmingham. Is it unusual for a hit to take place in such a <clears throat> public crowded place? And well, it wasn't location, it was the person. So wherever the person was is where it was going to take place. Wherever they can catch that individual. It, so it wasn't location based. It was the individual who was there based. And that's just where they happened to catch them. Sir? So there was also reports of a, sh a shooting at Onyx shortly after that, within like the next couple of hours. Um, can you confirm about that? And if so, is there any correlation to the shooting at Hush? No correlation that I'm aware of. I uh, don't know of any individuals who were shot at that location, just a shooting. And I believe uh, at least one or two arrests were made, or people were taken into custody, shall I say. Thank you. Now. Just to confirm, did you say that the, the alleged shooter was in the car, got out, uh, ran, or was it like a drive-by? Like, what was the situation? Okay. That you the suspects in? pulled up in a vehicle, exited the vehicle, conducted the shooting, got back in the vehicle, and fled the scene. Thank you. Can you also clarify, you did say that the, the target or targets were, uh, in fact, killed? We believe one of them was, yes. One of them was? Yes. Was there just one target? As far as we know at this point in time. Do you know what the beef is about? No. I mean, there could be multiple things. That's one of the things that we're looking to. Like I said, we're 10 hours in. It's, it's, it's hard to give all the answers at, at just 10 hours in. Um, there's a lot more information. Our teams are out working today. They'll work through the night and continue on. We've pulled all of our resources. We have our federal partners who were there with us last night when we were working. Um, so they were there committed, you know, from, from the time that occurred till, to where we are today and still out assisting us. So I know the mayor has spoken with um, Washington, D.C., and – individuals there and, and they have you know asked him what he needs what the city of Birmingham needs to work through this and he's he's advised them of that so really it, it just comes down to just some time information from the public and us just doing our job so I can assure you that us doing our job is not going to be an issue it's the public's assistance is where it's really going to come down to at the end of the day that's that's the biggest piece that will expedite this investigation We've got men and women who will run through brick walls to vet that information and get these cases worked. That's not an issue. We just need the information.
If this was believed to be a hit, I mean, is there anyone else that's in danger that maybe moving forward could not also that, be a hit? Not that we know of at this time. Chief, this was a Saturday night. You know, people were trying to go out and have a good night and maybe even got caught in this. What message do you have for people that maybe were just trying to enjoy their night out and got caught in the middle of this? You know, as the mayor and I both said, this is a very tragic situation. That's one thing that we were discussing and we're discussing last night is just there was individuals there who were just trying to enjoy themselves, who uh, just want to have a nice evening, uh, and, and this occurred, and now they're, they're injured. They've, they've got injuries that they'll have to live with the rest of their life, the trauma, the mental anguish that they've had to go through. And so it's difficult, you know, for the, for the first responders, whether it be at the hospitals, BFRS, BPD staff. I mean, you can see it in some of their faces. And so it's difficult for everyone that this touches. And so, uh, you know, our plea is for the, you know, our hearts are for the community. You know, so it's difficult. Uh, you know, I wish I had answers or, or uh, something I could say to make it better, but I just don't, unfortunately. It's just a tragic situation. Uh, and I know our men and women are working hard every day to, to prevent these things. I mean, if you look at you know, we've taken almost 1,100 guns off the streets of Birmingham this year. So it's not that the police department's not working hard to combat this issue. Um, and, and I like my hats off to the men and women of Birmingham Police Department and our federal partners. They're always asking, what can we do to help? And they're right there with us. So we're, we're doing everything we can at this point in time. So. All right. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it.